Welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, we will look at Morph 3D characters and we will compare them to Dast 3D characters, which we have used in the past. Let's start and head over to the Asset Store and type in MCS. This will bring up all the different assets uh, we can use from Morph 3D and we will simply use the MCS male character that is available for free. Once you have downloaded it, we can find it in your download section. Here you can again filter for MCS and you will find the asset right here. For this video we are using version 1.6 which has just been released. An older version which was called MCS Mail Lite is not supported anymore. Click on import to import the files into your project. In the import dialog we see that there is a core package and an M3D mail package together with an upgrader script. Click on import. Once the import is completed, you will see this upgrading dialog. This will come up even if you have never used any of the more 3D characters in the past. Simply click on install. Once the importing is finished, we can see that we now have a more 3D folder and a streaming assets folder in our project view. Let's try to find our character. You can find it under content, M3D mail, and a few folders down, we see the actual asset. Let's drag it into the scene. Here we can see that there's some textures missing. In order to fix that, simply right click on content and choose reimport. Once the reimporting is finished, you can see our character already looks much better. Let's move it back here to the other characters so that we can compare them side by side. Next, we will add some clothing items to the character. Simply find the content folder again and go to Urban Metro Outfit. And let's start with pants. In order to add items to your character, you go to the parent object and to the character manager script. Here you find a drop down for content packs and you simply drag and drop the items that you wish to place on the character in this field. We do the same for shoes, left and right separately. Shirt and vest. We can find the hair in the Brit hair folder. Let's drag the hair in as well. All right, that's a good start. Let's take a closer look at our character. First thing to note is that Dust 3D characters and Morph 3D characters are created by the same people in the same company. So naturally, we will see a lot of similarities between the two types of characters. You can, for example, see this in the hairstyles. Those two hairstyles here are the same. We're simply using different shaders. Or actually, we're just using different settings of the same shader. Morph 3D characters come with their own sets of shaders. So let's have a look here. In our project folders, we can find folder vendor, and then Unity shaders, and we see different hair shaders, skin shaders, and variations of the standard shader. This is pretty similar to what we did with our dast 3 characters, where we created a double-sided version of the standard shader. And in fact, if we were to go into this character here and change its shader to a double-sided shader that we created last time, and change the uh, render setting from fade to cutout, we would get the exact same hairstyle. And again, this is just a matter of preference. When we have a look at the skin, I already changed the parameters of the skin here. The standard setting for more 3D characters actually is a normal map strength of one, both in the main map and the secondary map. And you can see that makes the skin look really rough and bumpy. I prefer to actually lower that value, but that is something you can play with and you can adjust to your liking. One other thing is that more 3D characters already come with a double-sided shader for its clothing items, so we don't have any problems with clothing not rendering properly. Also, more 3D characters come with something called alpha injection. Uh, this is pretty much just uh, an alpha map where 
we can make different parts of the body transparent so that there's no skin poking through our clothing items. This is something we manually did with our Dastard characters over here. So there's a lot of time savings when you use any of the more 3D characters because all of that stuff is already done for you. One other thing that the more 3D character does quite well is the level of detail. So as you get further away from the character, you can change the level of detail of the character. You simply go into your character manager script here and you have a slider where you can change the level of detail of your character. For the dash 3D characters, we would have to manually import different versions of the character, for example, using the decimator in Dash Studio, and then apply a LOD group and change the complexity of the character as we move away from it. So again, some of the work is already done for us with the Morph 3D characters. One other nice feature is this section here on Morphs, which you again can find in the character manager script of the Morph 3D character. Here is a long list of Morphs that you can use for a character to tweak it to your liking. In fact, these are some of the same morphs that we have available in das 3 d And here we can find our youth morph that we have applied to these other characters. Unfortunately, not all of these morphs are working properly. So if we change our youth morph, you can see that the clothing is actually not being morphed and we cannot separately move the clothing items as we did with our other das 3 d characters. So this youth morph actually doesn't work. However, there's another type of morphs that's called 10-year-old and 5-year-old, which is working quite well. There's two more things I'd like to highlight. The first one is the availability of different items, clothing, hairstyles, different characters between the two platforms. Das 3D has a much larger selection of items that is available, but it is for you to find out which ones actually work in Unity. So, Morph 3D actually pre-selects the best items and makes them available in Unity. And over time, the selection of items available hopefully will increase to the point where you can basically create any character that you like and that you need for your game, simulations and so on. One thing to note is that all the characters available right now on Morph 3D seem to be Genesis 2 models, so there is no update to Genesis 3 yet with the more complex rigs and different textures and so on. So that is something to wait for. The second thing I'd like to talk about is licensing. Morph 3D characters have a pretty straightforward license through the Unity Asset Store. You purchase any item and you can use it in as many projects as you like. das 3D on the other hand has a fairly complex licensing system through their website. You have to purchase individual items, but then also look at the vendors that are offering those items. For each item you use in your projects, you then have to also get either an indie or a full developer's license for that vendor and that can actually cost several hundred, if not thousands of dollars. So here the advantage clearly lies with more 3 d The last thing I'd like to talk about is just the difference in how you work with those different character systems in Unity. more 3 d has all different scripts attached and tries to automate and simplify a lot of the things that you can do with your character. For example, attaching items or making changes to the character through morphs. Now, some of that stuff is really convenient, and other things are just a little bit annoying, inconsistent, or maybe slightly buggy. I personally prefer to just have all the, the freedom to use my plain characters from Das Studio, and then make changes as I need. I'll give you an example. This character here now has shoes on, but instead of actually adjusting the, the position of the character, we have to do that manually. So now, our character actually is not at zero, zero, zero anymore, but instead it needs to be slightly above the floor to not clip through the floor. Obviously, that changes what, depending on the size of shoes and what type of shoes you're, you're adding. Now, that is just a small inconvenience. A bigger problem right now is using props. Now, props at the moment, I'm not sure whether they're working correctly or whether that's just a bug that will hopefully be fixed in upcoming versions. But if we add, for example, another content pack, for example, the pistol, I already added it here, but let's add it from scratch. Just drag it in here. And then let's look at attachment points so that we, for example, use this nine millimeter pistol in the left hand of the character. We have to search for an attachment point, which is basically just the name of the different bones of the character. And I know it's called left hand, so let's use that. We have to add the attachment point, and now we can add a prop. You can search for a prop, and a long string comes up. I assume this is our pistol, but I'm not sure. Unfortunately, there is not a lot of documentation for this kind of functionality at the moment. 
And again, we have to actually add the prop. The pistol appears. It doesn't have any textures on right now, but let's just see what happens. Can play. Unfortunately, the pistol, I think, just disappears again. So I think this is just a problem right now where I'd prefer to just simply manually attach the pistol to the bone of the body as we did with the Dust3D characters, and then we can just carry it around. Anyway, so those are just a few inconsistencies and problems. Another problem is that the system here with all the different scripts and so on doesn't exactly support undo. So that if you just undo something in Unity, the item might disappear, but the scripts won't exactly update. So that's another problem. So there's probably quite, quite a few situations where you will receive some errors and um, we'll get stuck here and you might have to redo your character. I assume that those kind of things will be fixed fairly soon in a new version because version 1.6 just came out. But anyway, this is sort of the last difference that I can see between the different characters. Altogether though, I think it's a it's a good balance of, of functionality and uh, sort of the freedom that you have with the Death 3D characters. And I think for a lot of people also the licensing and the cost will make a big difference um, for either choosing one or the other system. That's all for this video tutorial and thanks for watching.